This program is rated PG. It contains themes and scenes which may not be suitable for very young audiences. Parental guidance is advised. We're working to connect a region of over 600 new bridges between our lands. Welcome to ASEAN in Focus. I'm Alma Angeles and joining me today is from our EBC Thailand Bureau. Hello, Esther. Hi, I'm Esther Padanga from EBC Thailand Bureau bringing you the news in the dynamic ASEAN region. On today's headlines. The favored few always. President Duterte the directed Chan. the uh, Department the of Health Chan. to conduct an inquiry into the supposedly unauthorized inoculation of a child of a celebrity. We are joined live by Her Excellency Maria Angelita C. Aquino, Philippine Ambassador to the Kingdom of Cambodia, to give us an update on the Filipino community there. Ex-civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi was due to have a court hearing on Wednesday in Myanmar's capital, Naypyidaw. On criminal charges that could see her permanently barred from political office, but it was postponed. A Singaporean blogger was ordered Wednesday to pay almost $100,000 in damages for defaming the Prime Minister by sharing an article on Facebook linking the leader to a corruption scandal. First, Cambodia's government has included garment workers among the list of priority groups to receive the COVID-19 vaccine and has tasked native organizations, including the Garment Manufacturers Association in Cambodia, or GMAC, to support a streamlined rollout campaign. A representative of each factory is being asked to put their name forward to receive the training of administering the jab before the 26th of March, after which it's expected that manufacturing sites will be rearranged to most rounds of vaccination. Cambodia yesterday confirmed 29 new cases of infections, bringing the total number of the infections in the kingdom to 1,817 so far, according to the Ministry of Health in a statement. The new infections included 27 local cases and two imported cases. The local cases included 22 in capital Phnom Penh, three in Ko Kong province, and one each in Kandal and Tubuang Kimung provinces, according to their statement. The imported cases were detected in a 30-year-old Indonesian man and a 47-year-old Filipina traveling to Cambodia on Monday from their countries via a connecting flight in Singapore. Now, still in Cambodia, the Ministry of Health, as earlier mentioned, reported another 29 cases of infections, all but two of which were linked to the February 20 community outbreak. And of the two imported cases, one is an Indonesian man who arrived in Cambodia via Singapore on March 22. And the other is a Filipina who arrived from her home country through Singapore the same day. Let's get an update on the coronavirus situation there and the Filipino community. Uh, we would like to welcome to the program and honored to have the Philippine Ambassador to the Kingdom of Cambodia, Her Excellency Maria Amelita C. Aquino. Hello, Ambassador. Welcome to the program. Good afternoon, Ms. Alma, and thank you for inviting me to the program. And greetings from Phnom Penh PE. It's 1 p.m. here. We, we are uh, one hour delayed. Mm -hmm. uh, Ambassador, first I would like to ask, how are you po? Kung isa na po kayo uh, We are okay here in the embassy. Uh, I'm on my third month of uh, being ambassador here. And uh, I, I have already done uh, some of my calls with the ministers, including the king. And of course, in all these calls, 
uh, they have always cited the contribution of the Filipino community to Cambodia. We have around 7,000 Filipinos in Cambodia. Uh, majority are teachers, are professionals, uh, supervisors in garment factories, mm -hmm. and uh, they have recognized uh, the contributions that the Filipinos are uh, doing here in Cambodia for uh, in terms of uh, capacitating their Cambodian counterparts and in the case of teachers uh, in molding the, the youth of Cambodia. These are the future uh, leaders of Cambodia. Oh, that's good. Uh, for now, can you give us a brief update on the uh, situation of the coronavirus there in Cambodia, ma'am? Uh, in general, Cambodia has been able to manage the spread of the coronavirus uh, infection. Uh, when, when I arrived uh, in December, mm -hmm. uh, cases were around uh, 300 plus. And, uh, and as of Febru February 19, cases uh, was around 483 with no deaths. But uh, after February 19, there was an outbreak. Uh, on February 20, and uh, from February 20, uh, there's been a, an increase in the number of cases. And as was mentioned during the the, the news, mm -hmm. uh, cases have now reached uh, 1,800. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I, have, I just came in here. It's now 1,872 cases. Wow. And out of those 1,872, 1,348 is linked to the outbreak and there are now seven deaths. Mm -hmm. So, medyo lumaki yung uh, pagtaas ng, ng infection. So, the government has uh, imposed uh, strict observance of, uh, of social distancing, the wearing of masks, uh, temperature checks, mm -hmm. uh, sanitizers, mm -hmm. and uh, Entertainment venues like uh, the cinemas, the theaters, museums mm -hmm. have been temporarily suspended. Schools, mm -hmm. both private and public, uh, throughout the country at all levels, have been uh, have been also suspended. So classes are now being held online. But before the outbreak, mm -hmm. uh, the children are already going to school, mm -hmm. and. Uh, of course, but then uh, shops, restaurants, supermarkets, banks continue mm -hmm. to be open. But of course, uh, there is a very strict requirement to observe the health protocols. Mm -hmm. And uh, and in fact, a uh, law was recently promulgated, which provided for fines and penalties for those that uh, violate the, the health measures that are being imposed. And, uh, medyo yung virus has also reached around 11 provinces already. Mm -hmm. So uh, non-essential travel is being uh, discouraged and big gatherings is being discouraged. Mm -hmm. The local governors, some local governors have already uh, put some checkpoints and restrictions along their border so mm -hmm. that they can, yung talagang hindi pinapapasok, so that they can they can control and, and see kung it's really necessary for the person to, you know, for the person to be going to the mm -hmm. province. Mm -hmm. Ma'am, you mentioned uh, promul you, the, the country promulgated some laws in imposing some uh, fines on those who will violate uh, some uh, protocols there. Can you mention uh, what these laws are po, or some of them po? Uh, for example, for... Uh, Mask and social distancing, mm -hmm. uh, if you fail to comply with that, there are fines for individuals, $50 to $250. Mm -hmm. If it's uh, business owners, from $100 to $1,250. Wow. Uh, mm -hmm. Those who escape quarantine, may mga ano kasi, uh, may mga nag escape ng quarantine. Actually, the February 20 event uh, was triggered by uh, some... Uh, foreign nationals who escaped from quarantine and it turned out that uh, some of them were positive. So, so medyo stiff ang ano nila dito. If you escape from quarantine, 
six months to one year imprisonment and fine between 500 to 2,500. So, uh, so ito yung, ano, that's why they passed these measures to ensure that uh, people will really comply. But in general, actually, mm -hmm. uh, people are complying because they're scared. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, you know, what, for one year, they, they've had, what, 400 plus cases, no yes. deaths. Yes. And uh, actually, when I arrived here, my feeling was, except that we have to wear masks, we have to do social distancing, otherwise, it seemed normal. Mm -hmm. Shops are open, you can go to the restaurants, transports are available. But because of this outbreak, mm -hmm. uh, People are really uh, strictly observing this, but of course there are some, just to make sure that it's really complied with, uh, they impose these uh, penalties and sanctions. Mm -hmm. Ambassador, you, you mentioned the, the February 20 outbreak, no? Is this the only cause of the spike there in Cambodia? Parang bigla po, hindi lang naman po sa Cambodia, the, around the world. But in Cambodia, uh, what, do you cause, what do you think is the cause of the spike? Is it only the... Uh, uh, Actually, yes. at, if you look at the figures, uh, like now, it's uh, one, one, the total is 1,872. And then the one, 1,348 is related to the community outbreak. Mm -hmm. So the non-related ones is around, uh, uh, if you compute more, around 500, yeah, around 500. Mm -hmm. So the spike is actually related to uh, the community outbreak mm -hmm. because uh, based on the new, uh, there were four who escaped and, and they, they went everywhere. <laughs> oh they went to so many places. Well, you know, nanganak na ng nanganak, and then mm -hmm. may mga weddings pa. And uh, I just found out that weddings here can be very big, 800 to 1,000 guests. My. So I, I think that was uh, that was one of the reasons. And they went to, you know, nag-karaoke, nag sa... So, so it's actually related to those outbreaks. And uh, I think this, this is the third outbreak of Cambodia uh, mm -hmm. last year, but they were able to, to manage it. So they, they're hoping that with these uh, restrictions, major uh, bababa ang mm -hmm. spread yes. because of course it's very important for them, you know, for the economy to recover and uh, to at least uh, go back to some sense of normalcy. Mm -hmm. True. Um, you. There was a mention in the news about a Filipina who uh, tested positive who came into Cambodia. Ah, kumusta na po siya? <laughs> uh, actually, as of yesterday, yes. dalawa na po yung Filipina na... Oh, okay. They all came uh, from... It, it, uh, actually, it's, it's in the news anyway. Uh, they all came from the Philippines via Singapore. Mm -hmm. uh, yung isa, yung nauna, she's uh, asymptomatic. And actually, nagtataka nga siya ba? Kung ano nangyari because there's been so many tests. You're required uh, 72 hours before leaving the Philippines. Mm -hmm. Upon arrival, uh, you take the test, mm -hmm. and I think she was negative. But on the 13th day, before the quarantine ends, I think that's when, uh, that's the part of the procedure to get tested again. Mm -hmm. That's when they found out na, that she was positive. And she took the test, I think, yesterday. And we're tra still trying to find out. As of now, hindi pa namin malaman kung nag-negative na siya. The other one was just yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, alam na ng relatives nila, but of course for privacy reasons. But yes. we'll check on them, how they are. We gave them uh, our number in case they need uh, uh, mm -hmm. to call us. Although ang pinakapakiusap nga nila, ayaw din nilang yes. may makakaalam kasi... Siyempre, opo. They fear na even if they're already negative, eh, medyo magkaroon ng, ng stigma na sure. no, no. So we're also okay. very, very careful about uh, disclosing information that might uh, have give a hint of who they are. Mm -hmm. Dalawa na po ang ano, pero, pero yung mga nandito is uh, they're uh, fortunately very healthy 
and uh, safe. Mm -hmm. And actually, they're also very aware. And in fact, before this community quarantine, I mean, before this outbreak, yes. there were planned activities. We have uh, newly launched Philippine Chamber of Commerce, wow. and there was an activity. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a newly formed group, uh, Cordilleras in Cambodia, and they were they also had an activity. But when there was an outbreak, wala pa hindi pa impose yung restrictions. Pero nalaman na on their own, they decided not to uh, to push through with these activities because it will mean gatherings. Eh, mm -hmm, na ano? Mm -hmm. Talagang they're they're very conscious of uh, of taking all these measures because of course. Uh, we want to stay healthy and it's very difficult, especially if you're not far away from your family and you're not in your country. Mm -hmm. But then, of course, we also try to remind them that we kami to wear your mask. And then, dito sa embassy, para hindi rin, if they need to do some transactions, uh, we try to limit it to 15 minutes. So, what to be able to do that, uh, we have online appointments, so fill up na nila yung forms, sasabihin na nila. So when they are in the embassy, 15 minutes lang tapos na yung transaction para hindi rin magkaroon ng exposure masyado. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But they can do it also online po, pwede din. Online, online pero meron iba mo na, like yung kailangan. sa past, mm -hmm. kailangan take yung pictures. Pero pagdating nila sa embassy, wala na yung filling up of forms. Kukuha na na lang ng picture. So ready na, tapos ready na rin yung mga kung ano yung documents na dapat ibigay sa kanila. So mm -hmm. I think yun ang ina-average namin, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ang galing po ano, at least uh, hindi na rin ho masyadong naghihintay, hindi na rin ho, hindi na rin, um, ano. oo, pati po ang exposure, yes. Sunday, may Sunday, ano kami, once a month, we have uh, our consular office dito sa embassy, nagbubukas na Sunday para dun sa mga may kailangan gawin, hindi makaalis sa office o hindi pwedeng mag-absent. So, mm -hmm. uh, nag-open din kami once a month ng uh, at least uh, half a day na consular services. Mm -hmm. How is, uh, ano, ano po, uh, work in the embassy po? Uh, are people 50% capacity po ba? 50% uh, ano po ba ang pasok? 100% po. 100% kami. Actually, when the outbreak uh, yung medyo nagiging serious na yung case, sabi ko sa, I mean, I'm new here, no? nasanay ako sa Philippines eh, 30% yung ganun. So sabi ko, parang medyo nakakatakot and uh, mahirap yung baka pwedeng may two shifts in case, you know, uh, something happens, at least meron kang backup. But then mm. when we were looking at uh, ano yung function ng bawat isa, we're, we're, we're very few here. Parang medyo mahirap. So, nandito kami 100%, pero ang ano naman ho, medyo may kanya-kanya kaming rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, tapos yung dating kumakain kami na wala na kanya-kanya ng kain sa rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, pero yung medyo mahirap ho na hindi 100%. <laughs> <laughs> na, ano. And uh, we're being very careful. And medyo nagko-consult din kami sa mga ibang counterpart embassies namin. And in general, yung ibang embassies, ano eh, uh, pumapasok din ho sila. Opo. Um, what about vaccination po? I know that Cambodia has started vaccination last month? Last month nga po ba? Uh, yes. How is it going po? February 10, they started the vaccination. And yes. as of the figure that I have here, uh, they have already vaccinated more than 300,000. Mm -hmm. 300,000 and the target is for them to be able to inoculate from 10 million to 13 million which would be eight, around 80% of the population okay. yun ang target but so far 300,000 may mga priorities pinaprioritize nila and I think it was mentioned already in the news na uh, nasama na yung like yung mga factory, of course, yung mga frontliners. Yes. And then we have the, um, yung mga healthcare workers, yung civil servants and military who are involved in the uh, COVID, uh, working on COVID campaigns. And then uh, 65 years, the elderly. Mm -hmm. And they started already the, I think they started today. 
Mm -hmm. 15 days of pay to have the elderly, meaning uh, 65 or older, mm -hmm. for the vaccination. And mm -hmm. then, kasama rin ang journalists. Kasama oh. ang, ang garbage collectors. Okay. And department workers. Yes. Kasama mga, mga yan na ano. No? Yung mga Pilipino po natin na nagtutrabaho po dyan, masasama po ba sila? And is this free po? Free po lahat. Actually, there was an announcement that diplomats uh, and foreigners are will also be give, vaccinated according to their, their vaccination plan. For the yes. diplomats, that start March 23 and hanggang Friday, yun yung for the diplomats. For the rest of the foreigners, uh, we're trying to, kasi in-announce ho nila yung about the foreigners, mm -hmm. but the embassies don't have any information. So, ka, uh, ang embassy natin, and the other, the rest of the embassies here, we're trying to uh, get an appointment with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to get more information on what are the plans for the foreigners. Kasi ho, sa aming nagtatanong eh, sa mga, hindi lang sa Philippine Embassy, ibang embassies nagtatanong din yung nationals nila, yes. paano ba makakapag-avail? So we're trying to uh, arrange a meeting para klaro kung, kung ano ba yung procedures. Kasi yes. nga, when... So, I think some of the foreign nationals went already to the hospitals. Mm -hmm. Tinutunan sa embassy. <laughs> eh, kami naman sa embassy. Wala naman kami ano. So, mm -hmm. so I, I thought tayo lang. And then it turned out, we have a WhatsApp group, all the ambassadors. Mm -hmm. It turned out, we have similar, you know, uh, their nationals are also asking them. So, we decided to, you know, to request a meeting with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And mm -hmm. perhaps, maybe Ministry of Foreign Affairs will coordinate with mm -hmm. the health Kailan ba? Paano ba? Ano bang dapat gawin? Yes. So, uh, but we were assured that uh, the foreigners are included because sa vaccination, kung kahit na magpa-vaccinate sila, kung yun namang ibang nationality na nandito dito, hindi, then it, it will also not be very effective. Eh? Yes. Uh, kasi kahit dito sa embassy, initially, they said that diplomats, mm -hmm. tama yung local hire. Mm -hmm. But then, we with the local hires. So finally, they, they also included the local hires. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, when it comes to the economy of Cambodia, Ambassador, what sectors were highly affected by the pandemic? I'm sure the garment sector is one of them. Yes, yes. Actually, uh, it's the tourism sector, mm -hmm. the manufacturing, specifically the garment sector, and construction and these three sectors actually contributes 70 70% of the GDP of Cambodia so medyo talagang naapektuhan yung yung kanilang economy especially yung tourism uh, and then we also have a lot of Filipinos working in the tourism industry so sila yung nagkaroon na impact sa kanila mm -hmm. because I think up to now uh, hindi pa rin pwedeng mag-travel dito yung mga tourists Although open na yung mga hotels, mm -hmm. pero I mean, talk to some people in the hotels talagang yung, yung rooms nila eh. So, yung rooms, wala talagang pumapasok. So, they're just relying on, you know, uh, events mm -hmm. for the youth. Uh, ano. so, so, medyo naapektuhan dito yung ating mga kababayan yes. na uh, working in the hotel industries. May mga kasino rin. Uh, although, meron namang iba na na... Uh, nasa supervisory level, so they're still there okay. uh, in the hotel industry. And then, uh, yung sa garments, mm -hmm. uh, medyo nagkaroon din ng disruption dun sa supply chain. And and I understand nag, at the height of the COVID, nagkaroon ng cancellation. So the garment factories either have to suspend operations or downsize. So it means reduction ng workforce. Mm -hmm. So that's some of our kababayans. Yung iba, nag-antay muna in case na, you know, mag-resume yung ano. Mm -hmm. Pero merong iba na siguro hindi nila kaya na uh, walang work for some time, mm -hmm. have opted for repatriation. And I think as of uh, as of now, we have repatriated 864 Filipinos. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Out uh, around 7, mga 7,000. Mm -hmm. Mga ito, yung mga talagang, I think they tried to wait and some of them have families na, yung ibang may mga bata, so medyo nahihirapan sila na, na yung walang trabaho dito. Pero there were those naman who signed up for repatriation and later on back out kasi they were able to get part-time jobs. 
Meron naman yung, yung nawala ng work, alam nyo, maabilidad din yung mga Pilipino, gumagawa ng extra-extra, I mean, a way to, you know, to earn a living. Maraming iba nagpo-post yung, yung sa food delivery, yan. Mar mm -hmm. Maraming, ano, so pinapatronize namin yan, pinaiikot-ikot namin kung kanina kami bibili. Mm -hmm. na, ano, and I think, uh, I think like with the schools, uh, bumalik na sa klase, although ngayon nga, huminto temporary, pero pwede naman yung online. Mm -hmm. Pero yung iba na talagang uh, medyo nahihirapan sila. So, so, uh, so we have this more than 800 uh, repatriations and we still keep track. We, we every now and then we check ilang ba yung gustong umuwi so that if we get sufficient number, we can request uh, the DFA for repatriation for a chartered repatriation o kaya baka pwedeng yung commercial flights na lang na available mm -hmm. na ipapant ng ano kung talagang wala silang uh, wala talagang means to, mm -hmm. to, to buy a ticket. Mm -hmm. Ambassador, in closing, I wish we had more time but uh, I want to ask you, what measures po did Cambodia implement in flattening the curve that met success and uh, can be implemented here in the Philippines? Yung mga measures nila, I mean, I, I was not here during the height of the pandemic, but from, from what I understand, the people really observed the, the health measures. Yung mga, actually, hindi sila nag-strict lockdown eh. Mm -hmm. Pero I think, uh, I think yung, uh, kasi nandun na rin sa culture nila na, na minsan nagmamask, and I think, there were, before there were campaigns for yung mga vaccination na, ano, na sa TB, sa dengue, sa ano. I heard that it helped. Mm -hmm. no? Pero I think the main thing was uh, the leadership was very strong in saying that we have to do this and the people listened and the people followed. Mm -hmm. And I think that's that's one of the, uh, one of the formula. Kasi, kahit na magsabi ng magsabi ang gobyerno, mag-impose ng ano, kahit na nga may fine, pag hindi susunod. But that's what I observe. They really listen to their leaders and uh, they, they follow. And I think they're also aware na, syempre, pag ma, ano yung kanilang, yung capacity ng, ng healthcare system, uh, alam din nila yung limitations. So they're really very careful. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, now with the vaccination, uh, maraming, I mean, sa local staff namin gusto na rin nila magpa-vaccinate na ano so so it also helps no yung yung awareness nila at saka yung discipline and and uh, following the leader mm -hmm. Thank you very much ambassador on behalf of Eagle Broadcasting Corporation maraming maraming salamat po for your time thank you very much for your time it's been a pleasure and thank you for taking care of our Filipino community there maraming maraming salamat po Thank you very much and uh, I wish you all success. I think it's a very good show. Nakita ko may mga ASEAN, ano pala kayo. So I think I will be watching your shows to get an update also sa neighbors namin dito. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> Thank you, Ambassador. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you, Ambassador. We'll be right back. Events happen around us all the time, in our community, in our country, around the world. Events that affect people, move communities, or simply inspire us. Interesting events that people need to know in these interesting times. We continue to be a competent partner in delivering news about these events. Fast, accurate, balanced, eagle news because we live in interesting times. Broadcast journalist Wayne De La Fuente returns on Philippine television and radio to deliver top stories and engage with the country's policy makers, shapers and movers. Tapalakayin ang mga pangunahing balita alas 7 ng umaga mula lunes hanggang biyernes 
live sa Teleradyo ng Net25 at Radyo Aguila DCEC 1062. Kasama si Weng De La Fuente sa Balit Talakayan! back to the program. President Rodrigo Duterte on Wednesday directed the Department of Health to conduct an inquiry into the supposedly unauthorized inoculation of a child of a celebrity. In a pre-recorded speech delivered Wednesday night, Duterte refused to divulge the identity of the person who received the coronavirus disease vaccine, despite not being on the government's priority list. Duterte, however, hinted that the incident happened in Paranaque. Let's listen in. Hindi nasunod kasi may iba ang balita ko uh, na ibigay sa mga anak ng mga artista uh, at iba pa. Yung the favored few always. The penchant, the penchant For Kriyanga. Dismayed by the report that a favored person jumped the queue to get the COVID-19 vaccine shot, Duterte advised Health Secretary Francisco Duque III to, to elevate the case to the office of the Ombudsman. Duterte's statement came after Department of the Interior and Local Governments or DILG confirmed that actor Mark Anthony Fernandez got vaccinated against COVID-19 despite not being a medical frontliner. Paranaque City Mayor Edwin Olivares, however, defended Fernandez's inoculation, saying the actor is eligible to be prioritized for COVID-19 vaccination because he has comorbidities. Olivares also explained that the local government had already finished vaccinating all the healthcare workers, making Fernandez qualified to be given opportunity for vaccination against the coronavirus. Meantime, Duterte also said some local executives have already been ordered to explain their alleged move to jump the priority line for COVID-19 vaccination. In other news, Vietnam has approved Russia's Sputnik V coronavirus vaccine, its health ministry said, two weeks after the Southeast Asian country kicked off its inoculation campaign. The shot is the second to be given the green light after the AstraZeneca vaccine. And the Ministry of Health has approved Russia's Sputnik V vaccine for the urgent need in fighting and preventing the pandemic, it said on its website. A thousand doses of Sputnik V given to... To Hanoi as a gift are already in the country, but it is unclear if or when more doses would arrive. The Russian vaccine is now approved for use in 56 countries with a combined population of over 1.5 billion. According to the Russian Direct Investment Fund or RDIF, one of the vaccine's developers. Vietnam with a population of 90 million has so far vaccinated 36,000 people with the AstraZeneca vaccine, most of whom are healthcare workers. It has placed an, under, uh, an order rather, for a further 30 million doses of AstraZeneca, while another 30 million are coming through the COVAX Global Vaccine Sharing Scheme organized by the World Health Organization. The Ministry of Health said it wants to acquire 150 million by the end of the year. COVID-19 confirmed cases continue to rise around the world for a fourth consecutive week with around 3.3 million new cases reported in the past seven-day period, the UN Health Agency said on Wednesday. Greece, which has over 60,000 new deaths reported. The European region and the Americas continue to account for nearly 8 in 10 of all cases and deaths. The only region to report a decline in deaths was Western Pacific, where deaths fell by nearly a third compared to the previous week. 
There was also a notable increase in the number of new infections in Southeast Asia, the Western Pacific, Europe, and the Eastern Mediterranean, according to the World Health Organization's epidemiological update. Brazil saw a 3% rise in infections with 508,000 new cases. France saw 204,840 new infections, 26% rise, and India reported 140,082 new cases, a 62% spike. Globally, there have been more than 100. 23.4 million confirmed cases of COVID-19, including 2.7 million deaths. 403 million vaccine doses have been added. In other news, Myanmar freed more than 600 coup detainees on Wednesday, including an Associated Press photographer arrested while covering rallies following fresh outrage over brutal crackdowns on protesters. Lawyer Kin Malingin, who was at insane prison for the hearing of two other clients, said 16 busloads of people left the jail at 10 a.m. local time. Some clients called me after informing me of their release, he told AFP. Local media showed images of the prisoners on the buses flashing the three-fingered salute, a sign of resistance for the anti-coup movement as people waiting outside the prison waved at them and returned the gesture. Meanwhile, an Associated Press photographer detained while covering an anti-coup protest in Myanmar told AFP he had been released on Wednesday. Let's watch this. <laughs> He said, and I quote, I am now on my way back home to meet my, with my mom. I'm in a good health. He also said that the police officer who sued me withdrew his charge. That's why they released me unconditionally, unquote. He had been charged with spreading false news along with five other journalists who were arrested the same day. They are from Myanmar now. Myanmar Photo Agency 7 News, Secret Online News, and a Freelancer. It remains unclear if their charges have been dropped as well. Pinzo's release came hours after more than 600 people held for protesting against the coup were freed from the same jail. Amateur videos obtained by AFP show streets in Yangon mostly empty yesterday following a call for a silent strike to protest against the junta. Myanmar security forces shot dead a seven-year-old girl in the city of Mandalay on Tuesday, the youngest victim yet in the military's bloody crackdown on civilian opposition to the February 1 coup. Quoting CNN, which cited relatives, local news outlet Myanmar Now reported that the girl named Kin Myo Chit was shot while sitting in her, father, in her father's lap after security forces kicked down the door to the family's home. And soldiers asked the father if everyone in the family was present in the house. When the father said yes, they accused him of lying and shot at him, hitting the girl instead. Myanmar now reported, quoting the victim's older sister. Activists called for a nationwide silent strike on Wednesday and streets were bare in the cities of Yangon and Naypyidaw. In the southern city of Maik, rows of, of dolls were set up along roads holding up tiny signs reading, We need democracy and we wish for Mother Sue to be healthy. Aid groups Save the Children and AAPP or Assistance Association for political prisoners, both say that at least 20 people aged under 18 have been killed in the crackdown. Myanmar's junta on Tuesday defended its seven-week crackdown, insisting it would not tolerate anarchy. Ex-civilian leader Aung San Suu Kyi was due to a court hearing on Wednesday in Myanmar's capital, Naypyidaw, on criminal charges that could see her permanently barred from political office. But her lawyer, King Wang Zhao, said he, the hearing was untoward until April 1 because of problems with video conferencing caused, caused by Hunza imposed internet shutdown. According to some defects in 
uh, internet and Wi-Fi operators, uh, uh, video conferencing cannot, could not be done. So the case was adjourned, the hearing was adjourned to the 1st of April, the April Fool's Day. So we want uh, that adjournment will be the act of April Fool's or not. So that is uh, the government forming day. But now the leaders of the winning party are now facing charges and most of them were on uh, the trial. The biggest difficulty is, uh, I'm, I'm serious and I'm doubtful that those not only the Aung San Suu Kyi and not only the president, but all those tried up in the present can have fair trials, rights, and uh, the rights of the defendants that is already allotted by the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and uh, uh, by any civilized constitution and any civilized law. In a country, in Evidence Act, the statement or the sayings or the confession of a person under arrest and under the, in the detention of the authorities or the police cannot be presented as evidence to any court. So that is not admissible, inadmissible evidence if she was charged in any court. The confession of Pyomin Lane and Mount Wake cannot be used as evidence against her. We have declared and we have made statements and we have applied to the court that uh, this trial should not be done in video conferencing. Suji faces several criminal charges, charges including, including for owning unlicensed walkie-talkies walkie and violating coronavirus, coronavirus restrictions by staging, staging a campaign event, event last, last year. year. She, she is, is also being investigated for corruption allegations. Her lawyer says he has, he has still not been, been able to speak to her privately. The hotel manager is detained. Chief, Chief Minister of Yangon confessed to giving Suji $600,000 in cash, along with more than 11 kilograms or $680,000 worth of gold. The Nobel, the Nobel laureate, who is widely beloved but across the country, has not been publicly seen since she was detained. In related news, the UN Stop Rights Forum passed resolutions calling for an end to the abuses of fundamental freedoms in Belarus and Myanmar in response to the ongoing concerns over the human rights situation in both countries. Ahead of the adoption of the Myanmar resolution without a vote by the 47-member body, the EU, which, has, which was the main sponsor of both texts, condemned the abuses in the Asian state before and after the military coup on February 1. Take a look. That could the Council will now consider draft resolution L21 Rev1 entitled The Situation of Human Rights in Myanmar. The military, the military has increased its brutal repression and must be held to account. They must stop the use of force and allow the population to exercise their rights. The EU calls on the military to end the state of emergency and martial law and to restore the elected civilian government. We call for the release of President Yin Myint, State, State Councillor Aung San Suu Kyi, and those arbitrarily detained. We would like to reiterate support to the mandate of the independent investigative mechanism for Myanmar, including the request for recipients of illegal orders to contact the mechanism. We strongly reject any measure which could lead Myanmar to international judicial system and any judgment that could erode the ongoing domestic judicial mechanism. Our position is utterly clear relating to ICC as it shall not exercise the jurisdiction over Myanmar, a non-state party to Rome statute. May I take it that draft proposal L21 Rev1 as orally revised may be adopted without a vote. It is so decided.
Enclave of Venezuela. In other news, a Singaporean blogger was ordered Wednesday to pay almost $100,000 in damages for defaming the Prime Minister by sharing an article on Facebook linking the leader to a corruption scandal. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong had accused Leong Sehian of spreading false claims about him over the article related to the money launder laundering scandal at State Fund 1MDB in Malaysia. Critics say the case is the latest example of the tightly regulated city state's government being heavy-handed and seeking, the, seeking to silence dissent online. Singapore's leaders have frequently turned to the courts to take on critics ranging from political opponents to foreign media outlets and insist such action is necessary to protect their reputations. High Court Judge Aidid Abdullah found in Lee's favor and ordered order Leong to pay him 133 Singaporean dollars or 99,000 US dollars. Lee had sought 150,000 Singaporean dollars. The premier took the stand at the start of the trial in October and accused Young of making malicious and baseless allegations, which had undermined the government's integrity and honesty. The article that Young shared originally published in a Malaysian news portal alleged that Lee was the target of the investigation in neighboring Malaysia over the 1MDB state fund. Billions of dollars were looted from the investment vehicles in the scandal that involves Malaysia's former leader, Najib Razak, and his inner circle. Young's lawyer, Lim, had argued the libel, the libel suit was unnecessary as authorities had already denied the allegations, adding the prime minister had picked on defendants when there are many others who had shared the defamatory article. Meanwhile, Vietnam's rubber stamp parliament opens its 2021 spring session in Hanoi, the last session of the 14th tenure, with the announcement of country leader posts expected to be made during this session. Let's listen in. Là xem xét quyết định việc miễn nhiệm bầu phê chuẩn một số nhân sự cấp cao trong bộ máy nhà nước để ổn định về mặt tổ chức và cán bộ. Công tác phòng chống tham nhũng tiêu cực lãng phí tiếp tục được triển khai quyết liệt, đồng bộ, bài bản, có hiệu quả, ngày càng đi vào chiều sâu, xử lý các hình vi sai phạm theo phương châm, không có vùng cấm, không có ngoại lệ, đã tạo ra sức gian đe cảnh tỉnh lớn, tham nhũng tiêu cực từng bước được kiềm chế. In other news, the Philippines and South Korea will continue to have strong ties in maritime security and naval cooperation. The commitment was made following the introductory call of newly designated Ambassador of the Republic of Korea, Kim In Chul, to Philippine Navy Chief Vice Admiral Giovanni Carlo Bajordo at PNF headquarters in Manila on Wednesday. The high point of discussion during the call was the continuing strong bilateral cooperation between Philippines and South Korea, particularly in, ma in maritime security and naval cooperation, said PN Public Affairs Office Chief Commander Benjo Negranza in a statement Thursday. Incidentally, South Korean shipbuilder Hyundai Heavy Industries was contractor of BRP Jose Rizal and BRP Antonio Luna, the first two guided missile, missile frigates in PN fleet. The South Korean government also donated Poham class corvettes to Navy, which was later renamed BRP Conrado Yap and is now considered one of the most capable and heavily armed ships of the fleet. In other news, the Philippine National Police said it started to activate survivor officers to ensure
quick processing of claims and benefits by families of deceased police officers. In a statement, PNP officer in charge, Lieutenant General Guillermo Elizar said that the police force already observed the provisions of the PNP Memorandum Circular 2017-075 published on December 26 of 2017 through the PNP Retirement and Benefits Administration Service to lessen the burden of the beneficiaries of posthumously retired separated PNP member in the processing of claims and to ensure the expeditious release of their benefits. Now, under this policy, the Chief of Office and Unit Commander of a deceased PNP member is mandated to designate a survivor officer tasked to assist the bereaved family or beneficiary in securing the documents required in the processing and timely release of the death benefit claims. The survivor officers are also tasked to regularly coordinate with the bereaved family and update them on the status of the processing of the benefits due them. On the last day of the session before the Holy Week recess, the Senate on Monday approved franchises of Vito Telecom Unity Corporation, another telecommunications company, and four broadcast firms. Senator Grace Poe, the chairperson of the Committee on Public Services, steered the passage of the measures. The franchise of Dito Telecommunity Corporation got the approval of 17 senators with Senator Risa Ontiveros and Francis Pangilinan voting against it and Senator Pantelo Lacson abstaining. Previously, the telecommunications sector was being dominated by Smart or Philippine Long Distance Company and Globe Telecommunications. Said the entry of Dito Telecommunity as a new major player in the Philippine telecommunications market would spur the competition for more affordable and better internet mobile services available to more Filipinos. House Bill 7332 seeks to renew Dito's franchise for another 25 years. Dito holds a congressional franchise via Mindanao Islamic Telephone Company Incorporated which is set to expire in 2023. In other news, Asian markets rose Thursday, but optimism over the pace of economic recovery continued to be offset by the worries about rising infections across Europe and the continent vaccines struggles with inflation concerns casting an ever-present shadow. After a year-long surge, global equities have run out of steam with expectations of a strong growth rebound stoking fear that prices will soar, forcing central banks to wind in the ultra-low monetary policies that have supported the rally. And while the stock's gains have been boosted by the rollout of inoculations, particularly in Britain and the U.S., Europe's stuttering launch has been compounded by a jump in new cases that has led to lockdowns and containment measures being reimposed. Still, Asian investors pushed tentative gains in early trade Thursday following recent losses. Tokyo, Shanghai, Seoul and Sydney were all up healthily, while there were also advances in Singapore, Taipei, and Manila. Hong Kong edged up, but investors were keeping a worried eye on the city's already slow vaccine program after Pfizer-BioNTech shots were halted Wednesday following the discovery of some flawed packaging. Meanwhile, maritime trade will slow down four days after a giant container ship got stuck sideways in Suez Canal, causing a bottleneck in one of the world's busiest shipping routes. The Taiwan-run MV Ever Given had sailed from Yantian, China and was heading to Rotterdam, Netherlands, when it became lodged at an angle across canal on Tuesday. The Suez Canal Authority said the 400-meter long and 59-meter wide ship was caught in gale force sandstorm, which affected the captain's visibility. Tagboats worked Wednesday to free the Ever Given, and analysts say it could be moved out of the way in a matter of hours, but traffic could nevertheless be disrupted for a few days. 
Why is the canal important? The canal it widened and modernized several times to accommodate new ships since it was inaugurated in 1869. It is responsible for 10% of global maritime trade. The waterway that drastically shortens travel between Asia and Europe. The Singapore to Rotterdam route, for example, is 6,000 kilometers and up to two weeks shorter than going around Africa. Camille Agloff, a maritime transport specialist at Boston Consulting Group, said it is an absolutely critical route because all traffic arriving from Asia goes through the Suez Canal. All right. Thank you, Esther. But before we go, Esther, I would like to read this uh, program advisory we have for our viewers today. Now, to help curb the increase in cases of COVID-19 in the country, Net25 will temporarily suspend studio tapings from March 20 to 27. Please expect some changes in our programming and your favorite entertainment shows like Happy Time, It's Singing Time, and Que Saya Saya will feature their best of the best episodes. Regular news programs and breaking news will with the latest developments about the pandemic will still go on for relevant information and other announcements keep watching net 25 you may also visit at net 25 tv on facebook and youtube Thank you, Esther, for keeping me company today. Thanks, Alma, and that's the latest news around the sea. And thank you all for watching. From EBC Thailand Bureau, this is Esther Odanga, and we live in interesting times. We'll see you back tomorrow. I'm Alma Angeles, and we live in interesting times.